Hello, hello. It's Vika Kovacin here. Let me check from the group that there's something showing here. Yes, ish. Maybe it's the delay. <laughs> Let's see. Facebook has been acting out again today, so let's hope that it will be okay. Not working for me just yet. Let's see from here. At least there's somebody watching, even though I can't see it from from my own screen. Let's try once again. Just because I would like to see the comments in in case you have any questions or something. So just uploading and uploading. Well. Let's hope it will get better. I'm going to add to the comments anyway, the link to my blog, where you can see all the materials listed. Let's see from here. Hi, Johanna. Hi, Tina. Hello. Yeah. Now there's the link showing, but I can't see any of the other comments. Let's try again. Okay, now, now it's working, yay! Thank you, Johanna, for saying that sound and video is working, perfect. Now I can see the comments, phew. <laughs> Makes things a little bit easier then, because the camera is kind of up there, so otherwise I would need to be jumping up and down to see what, what you are writing and if you have any questions. Hi Jennifer! So this is something I'm doing or actually redoing today. A little wooden canvas using one of the new silicone molds. This one is called Megamorph, but I'm not using the biggest version, but instead this smaller one here. And well, I'm thinking I'm going to start with the casting of, of that, but let's give it a couple of more minutes as the time is... Hi Dalma! Time is still two minutes until the live actually should start, let's say. It's the screen over here is freezing. I'm hoping that it doesn't freeze for you, but we'll, we'll see. Hopefully everything will be okay. So, well, how are you? It's been really hot this week here in Helsinki, and there's been a lot of like storms, thunderstorms around Finland. So hopefully you've had a little bit easier <laughs> uh, weather where you're at. Hi Domo, hi Che, hi Susanna, welcome, thank you for joining. Oh, and a couple of words in Finnish uh, at this stage. Heippa hei, kiitos kaikki suomenkieliset. Uh, Videon aikana siis hölpöttelen, kuten kuuluu englantia pääasiallisesti, mutta kysymyksiä saa totta kai aina laittaa suomeksi, niin yritän pitää silmällä tuota chattia siellä. Mikäli joku menee ohi, niin palaan sitten asiaan tämän, tämän live jälkeen. And same in English. I'm going to keep this live mainly English. So if you have any questions, just put them to the chat. I'm trying to keep an eye on it. While, while I'm making this, but in case I miss anything, I'll go through the comments afterwards. And let's keep our fingers crossed, everything will work, and the Facebook gods, or 
gremlins, what are they called, will be favorites. But now it's 8 o'clock p.m. here in Finland, so let's get started. First of all, welcome. This is something I'm redoing today. A little canvas with one of the new molds from Finnabar line called Megamoth. But I'm not using the biggest one in the mold as it's huge. So I'm instead using this smaller moth here, which kind of fits into my little wooden canvas. Let's do the moth first. Well, I have another one here already, but I'm showing you what I usually use to make, make these shapes. And that's just hot glue. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. There is one problem, or let's say something to keep in mind though, and it's that, well, it's hot glue, so it reacts with heat. So whenever I'm then using a heat tool to dry this project, I'm in a risk of melting the embellishments. So that's just something you need to keep in mind if you use this technique. When I'm doing the molding part, casting part, I like to use this bigger um, hot glue gun because there's more glue coming in every press than with the smaller one. But you can use the smaller one, of course. It just takes a little bit more time. And as you can see, there's no bigger mystery to this. I'm just inserting the glue straight from the gun to the mold and then let it cool down. It starts to go then to this milky kind of consistency when it's ready to be popped out. The same thing with the gears, just Add the glue in and then let it cool. If you have some air bubbles coming, one trick to use is to use a heat tool to kind of heat, preheat the mold and then add the glue on top because then there's not that much of a temperance difference between the mold and the glue coming on top. So that results less air bubbles in some cases. In some cases, the air bubbles even don't matter. Like this one is not perfect, but I've painted it with black gesso and it's really fine for this kind of project when there's a lot of things happening. So they don't have to be perfect. These, are, these molds are food safe but not, of course, after you have used hot glue in them. So if you want to make some kind of cake embellishments, dedicate one mold to that. But it's just this easy. My favorite way of using, I rarely use actually resin with this. I'm using the hot glue. Now I'll put this aside for a while to cool down because then we can pop those embellishments out a little bit later. Let's do a layer from the base. They have a little hole there, so let me just be sure it's the right way around. Hey Asta! As you can see, it's really shimmery and kind of glittery. So I've used dual effect paste to color the base. This is an effect paste, maybe not designed to be applied in such big surfaces, but also I thought that it would be fun. This is not a, that big of a canvas to cover with this paste it's to really make it shine. So 
So in a way, I'm just kind of plastering a wall here. I've added a couple of scoops of the paste on top of the little wooden block, little wooden canvas. And then I'm going around with my palette knife, just scraping and making this layer somewhat smooth because there's the grains in in the paste which you can maybe even hear when I'm applying it it's not going to be like totally smooth but smooth enough to be the base layer and also that little texture at least to me is wonderful adding a little something to the project immediately Carol is asking if you could do this on top of a canvas instead of wood, of course. If it's a small canvas, let's say, I wouldn't do this, like use this paste, just like um, in an economic or <laughs> money point of view to a huge canvas, because then it would You'd probably need a couple of jars if it was really, really big. But in a small surface or even top of your art journal, it's fine. Just applying this much paste might be a kind of cost issue. <laughs> but otherwise, of course, you could use a brush, of course, to, to apply it, but then the effect would be different with the palette knife you kind of get that stony if that's the right word to it whereas if you use a brush some of the paste is kind of probably ending up in the brush so if if you want to use that with a brush and we are going to use brush as well um later on the tip is to use a somewhat wet brush that kind of real not totally but um, prevents the paste from sticking to the brush a little bit kind of frugal <laughs> going now we would need to uh, what is dry this one but this is kind of a cooking show Ta -da! it's already dried just I made it this this beforehand so you won't need to watch me dry and dry and dry and also because it's an acrylic based product so you all know what happens if you really heat it it starts bubbling and then it's not like this grainy looking thing anymore but more of a crocodile skin or something it has bubbles so better to leave it air dry if dry not to dry if possible. Hey, bye, Eddie. Then another layer of that jewel effect paste. This time, sparkling onyx. I think I actually didn't say the name of this one. It's called blue opals. And this time, I'm using a stencil. I'm just creating this other textured layer here these are something that I haven't used that much so I thought that this project would be perfect for me to get some use for these gorgeous pastes so if I remember correctly this stencil is called the ghost rider again from the Finnabar line like the blue paste because this is the same same brand the jewel effect this is grainy as well and because of the textured surface underneath you might not get a totally even and really crisp image but that 
that doesn't matter in, in my case. But if you would like to have a really crisp surface or kind of pattern using this stuff, then use a solid, like smooth surface so that the stencil will lie flat on top of it. I just threw the stencil to a bucket of water underneath the table and it can be there until the end of the life when I can then clean it. Especially with this kind of paste that's really dimensional, it's really important to then clean your stencil, otherwise you will lose some of the pattern eventually. Hey Thea! Hey Nina! And now, as you can see, I'm kind of going through the edges just a little bit to give it some definition. Now, this would be handy if I would have now another canvas with this step done, but unfortunately that's not the case, so I need to be a bit careful when moving forward. Let's see if our molded pieces are ready to be popped. Yes, they are. Let me move this aside for a while. So these are just hot glue, which I made in the beginning. And now I'm just able to pop them out of the mold. They don't look much coming from the mold. As you can see, there's just this white-ish a bit uninspiring forms, but they have almost unlimited potential and they can be transformed to different kinds of things by applying different kinds of mediums on top. For this piece, they are all started like these, so not looking much, but with different mediums we are going to transform them into something more more interesting but what you need probably to do the first no matter what medium you are adding on top is to add a layer of gesso it's a primer so it's really handy there's three different colors in Finnabar line and you could use any of them but what I like to use if I'm doing something metallic is to use the black gesso as the first layer. I've also noticed that it really, really slightly prevents the shape from getting molten when you use a heat tool. Of course it doesn't save er everything, but at just a little bit more resilience, if that's a word to the piece when you're using a heat tool, but just be careful <laughs> if you're drawing a project. I already had applied one layer of gesso on top of these previously, but now I'm adding another one because the hot glue is really, really kind of smooth and sleek. So sometimes you need a couple of layers. Even if you would add acrylics on top, especially if you're working with, let's say, the Pinabar metallic paints, I would suggest adding a gesso layer first. It makes, the, makes it easier for the paints to grab on later on. And also you could use the black gesso kind of as a shadow to make a little effect out of it, only adding the colorant on top. So let's give these a little layer of gesso and then we'll leave them to dry. We are not going to use a heat tool as we don't want them to be melting. What I'm also adding a layer of gesso is this. 
a mechanical embellishment, just bottle caps, I think they are, are called. But with this metal, it's not that, let's say, important to cover everything because the silver tones will go with the project anyway. I'm not sure if you can hear something kind of from outside. There's a Ed Sheeran concert happening, so all the windows and doors are closed, but still you might hear something. Let me just, maybe I'll prep the two in case I need need more. So this is just corrugated cardboard. An easy solution to add a little bit of texture to a project. Let me add this one here so you can see it's the bottom layer down there. When you are ordering supplies or, well, any, any kind of stuff, then you might have some cardboard leftovers and they are wonderful for, for projects. Something as simple as adding a, a layer of black gesso and then some wax on top totally transforms the, the craft colored corrugated cardboard to resemble something different. Gives it another look. Let's hope that's enough. We can then cover this one later if, if needed. Hey, Daria! So, what next? We will start the composition. It's not totally dry yet, but no to worry. That also acts as a glue. <laughs> but we need some extra, of course. Close this jar and then I'm using the heavy body gel as my adhesive. I have two jars of it because this one, as you can see, it's almost out. So I'm probably needing to swap to the new jar during this live. It's not a big project, but still might, might need a little bit more. I'm using the piece of the corrugated cardboard as the first layer. So I'm just kind of smashing, smudging it in. So there's the effect paste underneath. And it will also kind of grab to the cardboard piece. And then I'm cutting a piece of another cardboard to fit inside this uh, bottle cap. Sorry, searching for words. <laughs> and use that as kind of a little pedestal to mount the bottle cap in place. You could, of course, use just the gel underneath, but this way I'm not using that much of the gel. And also it's a little bit sturdier right away. Because with gel, at least here in Finland, you need to have some drying time for it to be really put. So like this, it's well, it's not solid, but it's more solid, more sturdier to support the composition on top without adding like to the drying time. So you don't have to watch me or we don't have to watch this one dry for hours. Then I'm needing this one as the another medium needs some drying time. So now I'm using the heat tool, but really carefully. I don't want to melt this moth. Okay. 
it's a little bit more bendable let's say after that drying but such a short amount of heat didn't damage it but if you would just use the heat tool a longer time then you may end up in trouble then let's apply this okay i didn't check that things it's not clogged let's see yep Well, let's see if cutting it will do the trick for now. Yeah, I'm managing to get something. What I sh should have done is to check that there's no clogs beforehand, but this will do. So I'm applying some of the gilding glue to the moth. Wake up, Mari. And then I'm using a wet brush, or should I say moist brush, to apply it to the moth. A little bit of less water might have been a good idea, especially considering the drying time, but well, uh, it is what it is. Then let's add the silvery touches on top with the metal flakes. And now it's Handy not to have the glue to my fingers, otherwise I'll be sparkling along with the moth. So I'm just picking up the flakes really carefully and adding them on. And at this stage, you can see I'm not uh, smoothing them out just yet. I'm just trying to cover the whole thing Come on. with these little foil sheets. Just opening the ones up that are in a crumble. And I'm trying to cover the whole, more or less the whole thing, depending what you're after. If you want a totally silver moth, then go around the edges and cover every little piece. But if you're wanting a more grungy effect, then it's not that important to have every black bit covered with the silver foil or metallic flakes they are called. Now that the surface is covered I'm then using my finger just a little bit, not that much, to kind of tap the flakes in place and then I'm leaving it to dry for a while before removing the extra so that the flakes will adhere to the moth and when I'm then kind of brushing the excess off you really get to see the detail again but that needs to be dry underneath otherwise you'll just remove the whole foil. Zenith is asking what was used as the glue. I'm using this lighting. Oh. I've always said gilding, but <laughs> gliding glue <laughs> uh, 
for the flakes but any kind of sticky uh, glue will do I've all also used tacky glue with with those flakes but allowing it to dry but some something that's already sticky when you're kind of applying it so then the foils will well adhere immediately in place now that our star of the show is drying for a while let's add these cogs or gears in place Let's put that one there and Hedy says that there is a typo it's gilding glue thank you ah, I thought I've lost it all together because I th actually thought it was gilding glue which it is but now reading to jar but good to know Well, if I put it there, it's probably hidden underneath the wing, so maybe I'll follow the composition I already have in here. So let's put this one here. Right. Oh, because it flew away, let's add some more. Scraping the last little pieces of medium from the jar. Luckily, I have another one here. If that this one ends all together. Now, then let's remove the extra. Even though this dries clear. I've noticed that it's a little bit yellowish in some cases, so better to remove those bigger blobs now that we have a chance to do it. I'm not sure if this is now so dark, so can you even see anything looking at the screen? It's just a big black blob. But luckily we are adding the wax soon on top, so maybe that will allow then more to be visible. Now, let's see if this is then dried enough. This one could be a little bit softer brush even still. really show you the details not totally dry yet because with my finger I'm able to remove the foiling so if you're repeating this then allow it to dry completely before brushing the excess off That will give you a nicer effect. You're able to kind of even polish the little silver foil pieces to the moth and get it really shiny. This one is a little bit grungier moth now. Something handy to remove these little pieces of foil from your craft sheet would be um, what's that word for a uh, sticky brush uh, to re remove lentil and stuff from clothing? Tarraharia in Finnish. Mina says, sorry for angry face, totally mistake. Yeah, glad to hear. <laughs> of course you can react. 
with angry faces as well. But it's not nice to know that nobody's angry. <laughs> like so. Then wax, where's my wax? There it is. I'm using Opal Magic Turquoise Satin for this one. So it looks whitish. Sticky roll says Heidi. Perhaps I ha actually don't know the name of that. But if that's sticky roll, then sticky roll. <laughs> Let's go with that. But yeah, back to the wax. It looks white in the jar, but as you can see, when I'm applying it on top of the black, it turns to turquoise blue, kind of matching the background color. So that's Opal Magic for, for you. These waxes look different on top of white and black or let's say light and dark surfaces because the same effect of course applies even if it was dark purple and pink let's say but on top of darker materials or areas surfaces they show their true color and on top of just light surfaces it's just the opal that is visible, the white kind of shine. Add our little pore. Moth is a little bit crungier looking. I'm adding also some of the wax here to make up a little bit of that lost shine but the sample piece moth is done the same way only that there's a little bit more drying time which this poor fellow didn't now have enough of the other way to highlight the texture is to add something dark so what, if I remember correctly, I did with this one was to paint black gesso on top and then almost immediately remove it. But I'm really afraid that I will lose every bit of the shine from this one if I do it right now. So let's see if, if a little bit later I'm doing that. Now... Let's add here the moth in place, just with the heavy body gel again. Come on. There's not a lot of area to cover, but still enough. For this one to be really secure when the gel is dried. I used to use a lot of the 3D gel beforehand when I was sticking everything with my finger, but now I've somehow managed to start using a palette knife. So for that heavy body gel is is the thing because you get this kind of immediate feel of adhesion is that a word sorry i'm not good at english today but it feels kind of firm even though the adhesive is not dried yet then we need the jewel effect the black one there it is Closer than I thought. And now we are using a brush for it. So like I said earlier, wet brush makes things a little bit easier. So 
this acrylic based product doesn't stick to the brush that much and you can apply it to the project rather than having your paintbrush covered so I'm adding these spots with blobs of the stuff and that's kind of to match the already existing product in there but also to give a place for micro beads to be attached as they're a bigger blob let's say some of the pearls will sunk sunk sink in and while others are more on the top so it gives this lovely texture effect if you are working in a project like this in your own time then let the stenciled layer dry first because then it's easier to get the little beads just to these couple of spots and not all over unless that's the way you want them but if you want to highlight just a couple of spots then it's handier to have on the wet kind of effect paste to the places where you want the little beads to attach then let's take this one this is just wire just regular wire I'm getting a nice little length of it And what I did with the previous one as well. Not sure if you can see. As I'm kind of using one of the jars as my guide to make a little twirl or a nest. And this one is now too clean, so then I'm kind of making the rings a little bit different sizes anyway and then I'm just using the other end to tie the rings together then let's make it a little bit more rough not nothing too clean and then I'm actually it's not attached anyway no uh, glue or gel or anything it's just tucked underneath the embellishments here I don't have the pearls just yet but let's put it in anyway and then when I'm adhering the beads those probably will then keep this little piece in place of course you could adhere it for example underneath the moth wings but this way I kind of like it that it's so airy and so loose but still a part of the project kind of bringing everything together but without adhering it it looks a little bit different then it's just splashes and the pearls but i'm now going to try to add the black gesso to the moth let's see how it works it might be a terrible mistake but hey that's the way i roll <laughs> so let's see how it goes maybe i'll take just a baby wipe already at hand because this one is 
more delicate than my usual painting rag as that might be now too harsh for the gilding to handle so I'm just applying the gesso and then before it's dried I'm using the baby wipe to remove most of it so the gesso will be in the grooves of the piece and removed from the highlights so it then makes the little details and textures more visible to the eye kind of adding to the contrast making it more visible I'm kind of relieved that the gilding will stay put I'm not removing everything now with the baby wipe as I was fearing that the gilding glue hasn't been dry enough dried enough so but yay it will be there now it's more like the thing I wanted now it has some grunginess but still you can see the details not just a big blob of silver <laughs> So now we're able to adhere the pearls and do the finishing touches. I could use the heavy body gel also for the pearls, but I think it's easier if I just use this craft glue to adhere these little, little pearls in place. This one in the center, I'm kind of thinking that it's a pin holding the mouth in place, kind of like a butterfly collection. And again, if you're just joining in and wondering about the sudden bursts of music, there's a Ed Sheeran concert <laughs> nearby. Tweezers would be handy at this stage. Whoopsie daisy. Almost dropped that. One there. And then. Hmm. Now there's a bigger amount of the wire there, so it's harder get these pearls but we'll try after everything's then dry it's easier for me to decide the placement of all this wire like so and then just a couple of splashes I'm using the same kind of following the metallic silver thing I already have going on so this is silver spoon metallic acrylic paint I would use the opal magic wax but I'm not going to even try to dilute it to be able to flick it 
so a paint is an easier solution of course you could use opal magic acrylic paint as well just a little bit of splashes kind of the stars because I named this project Moth of the Starry Sky so there needs to be stars also although I thought about the micro beads being a cluster of stars as well so there we go now all the project needs to do is to dry <laughs> so um, and then it's done let's move these side by side so they are similar not the same here the moth is more detailed like i said because there was more drying time for the foil than during this live if i would have been well smarter i would have prepared one more moth to go in the project but well you learn things <laughs> If you have any questions, please just let me know. I'll be seeing the chat now. And thank you all for joining in, for sharing this 20, 45 minutes, 50 minutes with me on this Saturday night. And well, if hopefully you will have a nice weekend nice end of August and I'll be seeing you on next month. Thank you for all the compliments. Kiitoksia kaikille paljon. Jos on kysymyksiä, niin ei muuta kuin jättäkää niitä vaan tohon tai pistäkää viestiä tulemaan. I candy. Thank you, lady. So really kind of little easy project but with the right mediums and glitter <laughs> they look so much better so if there's nothing like huge questions right now i'm saying thank you and have a nice evening or day or morning depending where you are and well i'll be seeing you Thank you. Bye.